Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be Ample versus Rain here on In the Way of an Eddy. A weird name for a map, but a pretty fun map nonetheless. Bottom left, playing gray on a dark map is Ample. Woof, gonna be hard to see on the minimap here, Ample. And on the bottom right, we've got Rain. These two players have played a few times on my channel before. It's always an excellent PvT. In the way of an eddy, an eddy is a swirly thing in a river or a stream. So this is a swirl, right? Or maybe a four-leaf clover? Maybe? All right, so these are high ground, which are good for tanks and dragoon positioning. We've got a minerals-only base at the top and the bottom-ish. And we've got an island base at the top and the bottom as well. Hmm, <laughs> it's a four-player map. You start out on the low ground as an homage to the early Brood War maps before anybody knew what they were doing. And yeah, lots of places to expand on a four-player map when it's a 1v1. And again, you can't just float over a command center. You have to kill this NORAD 2 first. All right? All right. No! Come back, Fog of War. We need you. I get yelled at if the Fog of War isn't here in these replays. I get it. I understand. I'm not complaining. Just saying I get yelled at. Alright, cool. So, by golly. Um, Rain, are you going Nexus first? Rain? Dude? There's a barracks on the way from Ample. Dude, this is Nexus first timing. Okie doke. Rain's got a pile on and nothing else and BAM! Now a Nexus. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he's just... You can punish the heck out of this as Terran, right? We've seen Idra do it. We've seen Artosis do it. We've seen it done a lot. You show up. You put a bunker right here. You put, like, two Marines in it. You win. I mean, you don't win win immediately, but you pretty much win. The thing is, you have to scout it first. And by golly, Ample's not scouting hardly at all. He's just sending an SCV out now at two minutes. He's scouting the wrong direction, which for Rain is all the saving grace he needs. If this guy scouted the right way, he could respond to this. He could start throwing down a bunker now. There'd be really not much rain can do to stop it. He'd start sending marines over out of this barracks. Ta-da! Done. But now... Ooh, now an incredible economic advantage here from rain that Apple can't do anything about because he doesn't know that it's happening. Dude, this gray... It is bad enough in team games where I forget the gray player exists. Like, there's a 4v4 or something that I'm casting on Sunday, and... There's a gray player involved, and I'm, I just forget the player is there. So, I mean, I guess fewer players to remember. <laughs> you know, 1v1. So I'll probably be okay. I'll probably be fine. Yeah, the only way you can punish this as a Terran is if you go for that bunker. And if you don't, you just go for vultures and stuff like you normally do. The timing is too late to really stop it. There's going to be Dragoons out to deal with your vulture anyway. See, Cybernetics Core on the way. Oh, this is so good. This is so good from Rain. Took a massive risk, and by golly, it paid off. This is not the only game I've cast between these two players on this map, by the way. It was a top versus left that I looked up, because I do worry about recasting replays, especially after the Saturday cast last week where I reposted a 2v2 featuring Flash, but by golly, it was a 2v2 featuring Flash, and he was insane, so whatever. Whatever. What threw me was that the names were different. I got confused. I shouldn't have got confused than I was. It's okay. Yeah, so look. Dragoon on the way. Ta-da! There's a vulture out. This zealot is just here for scouting purposes. You are expanding, says the zealot. Okay. Good news. Good news for me. If you were one basing, this would be harder to deal with. And yeah, this poor SCV is like, oh, I have to tell my commander this is a Nexus first play. He's not going to be happy about that. Double pylon coming up here, I guess... To absorb some hits. I don't know what that's all about at all. But yeah, singularity charge. Dragoons are out. Further walling here is really worried about a vulture getting in here before the dragoon arrives. Understandably so. But the dragoon has now arrived. You can probably cancel this if you want. You don't really need this supply, but all right, fine. Leave your wall. And then what is this all? Ooh, what is this all about? I saw this probe come up here. It is a proxy robo, ladies and gentlemen. A proxy robotics facility for rain. This is going to be Reavers, isn't it? It's got to be Reavers. You throw it on the robo there. Maybe you make the robotic support bay here. Or I guess you could just make it up here too. But if this gets discovered, losing two tech structures instead of one is bad. 
We'll see. Spider Mines, first research of the day. Not often we get Spider Mines as the first research of the day. Usually it's going to be speed. I guess sometimes fine. It's probably more common than just going straight for siege mode. I think that's probably fair to say. Anyway, hit that like button if you're enjoying this cast so far. I'm here six times a week with Brood War content, which is like, what? Six times a week? Yeah, that's right. You heard me. Six times a week, sucker. It's going to be Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Wait, Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. I forgot about Wednesday. Wednesday is the new day. I got an autopilot there. It was bad. Anyway, mm -hmm, robotic support bay being produced. Not yet. Why are we just uh, just getting a shuttle? Um, is it gonna be dragoon harass? I, uh, okay. Ah, there's the support bay. All right, where's it built? Where's it being built? Down here, like in the very cornerest of the corner here, as far as he can, while still being in range of that pylon. A scan here is not going to reveal this. So he's doing his best to avoid getting scanned, which you have to do. Oh, what the what? He's throwing up a pylon here, I guess, maybe just to make sure that the flight path is safe for the incoming reaver drop of doom. Reaver production begins. Robotic support bay does not take that long to complete. It's probably shorter than it takes to make an entire reaver. Some buildings, man. Oh, look at this. These spider mines are so hard to see on the mini map. You're looking, you're watching this with me. You know what's up. You can hardly see that. If you're watching this on your Roku or on your PlayStation or Xbox or something, on your big screen, maybe it's a little easier to see these little spotches of light. But I'm going to say I probably doubt it. Most likely. Anyway. Academy coming in, getting comsat in case DTs arrive is pretty good. I, I, I just don't think he knows any, really anything that's happening over here. I haven't heard a scan, but I might have missed it. Might have missed a scan. It'd be weird. I mean, there can't be a scan because there's not a comsat station yet, stupid falcon. Right, there hasn't been a scan yet, he says uh, authoritatively. So just ready for Reaver stuff. That's why there's a tank and a Goliath inside the main base because Ample's had this happen to him before. And he knows if you don't have anything in your main base and a reaver shows up, you're a very sad Terran. So here comes the play. Siege tank not sieged, obviously, because siege mode isn't researched yet. But yeah, the Goliath is really the concern for this reaver play and got to back out. Just one hit off, did some damage. That's about it. Just really well prepared there was ample. Cool stuff. Zealot eating spider mines with his body. Ow. Gonna eat another spider mine with his body. Ready for this guy to eat a spider mine with his body? He can eat two before he dies, and the third one will kill him. But three, I don't know, one zealot for three spider mines is a pretty good deal. Not gonna say no to it. Third base on the way from Rain. Once again, I say this every time, but you gotta outexpand your Terran opponent. He's going mech, he's cost effective. If you can get three, four, five, six, seven bases out before the Terran really gets three going, you're probably gonna win the game. If you can't, you're probably gonna lose. It's kind of a simple math problem. In some ways. The game's way more complicated than that, but if you don't have the extra economy, you're just gonna die. End of question. And Rain is good enough to know, alright, well, gotta have more economy here. Ample's getting a third base, which is, oh, this pylon's also providing a bit of a block on the third base, at least requiring some tanks to deal with it. But, uh, kill the Goliaths. Kill them so that the shuttle may be free. Ugh, tank hit. Oh, what? 3 HP on that tank, that's not fair. That's hardly fair. What's the line from Wandaverse? Wait, multiverse? It's Doctor Strange in the multiverse? Whatever. Doesn't seem, that's what it is, doesn't seem fair. That's what it is, that's the line. Yeah, it doesn't seem fair. The Reapers, the Reapers say, please, please land, please land. Good micro here, keeping that tank out of harm's way. SCVs don't really want to go in there because there's the threat of getting, you know, revert scarabed to death. Not a good feel. Tribunal on the way now for the rain. Excellent, excellent. Very, very good. What else is going on in the world? I watched the finale of Obi-Wan. Man, that show has got some of the highest highs and the lowest lows of any show I've watched in a long time. The highs are really good. Like, the highs are really good Star Wars, but then sometimes it's just like... Why are you so dumb? Why is the writing so dumb here? It drives me nuts. And the finale is the same way. Super high highs and the lows are dumb. I just, can we? Space chases, right? The concept of a Star Destroyer is bearing down upon you. 
shooting at you. It was introduced in the first opening seconds of A New Hope. So that concept's been around since 77. I get it. But did you get the feeling that the Corvette was going to survive for 5, 10, 15 minutes, 4 hours, 3 days with a Star Destroyer attacking it? No, you didn't. You got the feeling like it was in a lot of trouble and it got tractor beamed in and stuff. So why? It's the last Jedi's fault. It's Ryan Johnson's fault. As this reaver does some work, but gets cleaned up quite nicely by Ample Fourth Base from Rain now. It's Ryan Johnson's fault. He envisioned a super long chase through space, which is stupid because your sublight speeds are not all the same. There is no concept of sublight is the same and hyperspace is effectively instantaneous, right? But the world build of Star Wars is so shaky, I can understand why they would do it this way. It's just... <sighs> A Star Destroyer... A Star Destroyer should either be able to catch up to something it's chasing or fall behind something it's chasing. It should not be the exact same speed. It shouldn't. And it drives me bananas that it is. Star Destroyers in general are, are super nerfed in Obi-Wan. There are times where it's like, Oh no, the Empire has tracked us to a planet. What do we do? And it's like, well, we're just going to fly away. Did they have Star Destroyers in orbit? Yes. How do they get through? It doesn't matter. They did. We're not even going to address the Star Destroyers. It's like... Brrr, rage. But then there's good stuff. There's such good stuff that like brings tears to my eyes. It's so emotionally perfect. And it's so exciting. Okay. Enough ranting. Enough ranting about Star Wars. Uh, rain's expanding again. Got it. Get it, got it, good. Enhanced EM, or EMP shockwave, that's what it is. Science vessels, gonna get that upgrade. Vulture's running around, throwing on spider mines, whatnot. I mean, in fairness, nothing crazy has happened so far in this game. Rain's expanding like he's supposed to. He did a little light reaver harass. It didn't kill a whole lot. He's not done much to reduce this tank count either, which is kind of the larger problem for Rain. You want to expand a bunch, but you also want to keep the tank count from getting to 30 in the first 15 minutes. He hasn't done a good job with that. And I don't know, Ample might just come out and straight win this game because of that one. Because the tank count is too big. I think a lot of tank has died so far in this game. The one. Spider minefields getting cleared out inside the middle of the map. I can barely see them, but they're there. Okay, so Ample recognizes, as always, you can't just sit at home. Be active with your vultures, man. At least force the Protoss to make some cannons so that as they're murdering all of your probes, they're also dying. So you can avenge those poor probes. It's the best you can do in that situation. Actually, some of the probes survived. A bunch actually survived. Some of those are probably transferring some from somewhere else earlier. Yeah, I'm liking it. I like Rain's play. It's just at some point... Ample's going to be maxed out. He's going to have 30 siege tanks. They're going to have plus three attack. And it's going to be very, very hard for Rain to stop those tanks from sh showing up right about here. Wrecking your natural base, killing a ton of your gateways, and destroying your tech. Tank position here, too, is really good. So this map is not bad for Terran. Not at all. I don't, don't think many Terrans would complain about it. Maybe Protoss would, based on some of these tank positions. Go in for it, baby! Just uh, willing to sacrifice zealots, willing to sacrifice dragoons to take out these tanks. Smart stuff. EMP does catch the Arbiter, but it escapes with its life, which is really the larger point here. And then, too many tanks are sieged up. Dragoons are backing out, but they did some work. They whittled down the tank count just a little bit. Okay? Okay. Let's see. I also finished watching Perry Mason on HBO, which is interesting. The one thing I'll say about Perry Mason, I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler, but man, operational security is a struggle for every single person in this show. Strangers are barging through doors that should not allow strangers to barge through doors pretty consistently. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. I'm like, oh, look. Ah, operational security is broken again. Like, all over the place. Every place we go. Anyway, alerts, brah, dragoon, brah, brah, brah. Arbiter providing that cloak. You got to keep scans. I don't see a science vessel in this play, but once again, falling back to the second line of siege tanks. 
and the Dragoons have to back out. So Ample trying to move, trying to move across the map here and get set in this beautiful position, and Rain is trying his desperateness. Desperate, desperately Ness. What is the... His most desperate? Sure, he's trying his most desperate to prevent that from happening, and he's doing pretty good so far. So look, you get three bases, Ample. Getting a fourth base is gonna be more difficult. Expanding here, maybe? Not a terrible idea. You need a lot of gas for dem vultures anyway, and they're a big part of your deal. Hallucination coming in, which indicates we're getting recalls. We're getting hallucinated arbiter recalls in this match. Rain loves them. He's very good at them. I'm excited to see what they bring to us. And here goes nothing. And again, another just kind of wander in. Kill as many tanks as you can when the sound... Oh, nice stasis. The sound of siege tanks attacking gets too loud and too intimidating back out. But guess what? Not happening here. He's going to wipe this army out. This is great. This is removing a ton of tanks from the playing field. The Vultures aren't doing as much work either. They're absorbing hits that would normally go at these tanks. The storm placement's been very good too. Tank down, tank down, tank down. Another tank down. The Dragoons decide not to kill this tank. They Job well done. We're worried about these guys coming out of stasis sometime soon. Wiping them out is kind of a big deal. Archon actually finished summoning. He needs to run because Vultures will do really good damage against those suckers. All right, good. 144 to 175. Rain hasn't lost any bases yet. He's expanding again for a... Oh, wow, one, two, three, four, six. A sixth base for him. And Ample's really only on the three, and Ample just lost a ton of his tanks. He's got six... He's got eight here, but it's not the 30. It's not the 30 that he needs, is it? No. Mm, coming on in for the attack again. Is it enough? I don't know about this one, though, from Rain. I'm trying... I'm trying to see it. The Arbiters are turn. I don't know, stasis -ing. They're taking Goliath hits for sure. Yeah, Rain tries this. He loses more this time, but speed lots getting on top of tanks is really good, especially if they have plus two attack. They will eat through these tanks very quickly. Dude, tank down, tank down, tank down, tank down. Tank down, tank down, tank down, tank down. Spider mines killing zealots, but also siege tanks. Dude, the tank count, again, reduced. All the way down to about five, which is nuts. Dude, Rain is taking Ample to school right now. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know how else to describe this game. He's not letting Ample have this fourth at all. He's got detection along the left side to make sure the fourth bases aren't taken here. And then he's just casually trading Dragoons and Zealots for tanks. He can afford to do it because he has twice as many bases as Ample does right now. Does he have fewer probes? Yes, but that means we're oversaturated at these bases of Ample's. Look at how many SCVs are on this one mineral patch at the natural. Ample needs a fourth in the worst way, and here it is. He's gonna try to take this thing. Really working his best at it, and I'm not sure that Amp or Rain's gonna allow it to happen. Is he? Maybe he's just gonna be like, all right, fine, you can have a fourth. I still feel like coming in off this high ground that tank count is not quite scary enough for a big maxed out Protoss army to deal with that. The said he's not maxed out, right? He's at 168 supply. He's producing two Zealots at a time, four High Templar at a time. I don't think he wants Archons. I definitely think he's doing this for the High Templar and the Storm, which has been very good so far for him. And Ample is transferring his SCVs over early to this base. It's so important to him that he starts getting income from this thing. He's a long distance mining from it before... It's finished completion, which uh, he was oversaturated down. There's nothing here anyway. Yeah, I mean, this... Mm -hmm, I just, Rain's got this thing on lockdown, I gotta say. Coming in again. He hasn't used the hallucination yet. Does he want to attack into here? It's a lot of spider mines and vultures and tanks this time. A little bit dicey. He's gonna take, he's gonna expand to this little kind of 12 o'clock ish base there. Try to clear out these spider mines a bit so future attacks have to deal with fewer spider mines. It just makes perfect sense. More arbiters on the way. I keep waiting for a recall to happen. I mean, that's why we have spider mines here, is in case a recall happens. The main base doesn't have any spider mines though. This might not be a bad place to go. Alright, so fourth base from Ample taken. Crisis averted for now. It's still. A really oversaturated base. But you know, do what you gotta do. He's not gonna sacrifice SAVs here. He's not maxed out. He doesn't need to free up the supply. He needs them if he's gonna expand again, which he's trying to do. 
Oh, and Rain recognizes. Okay, these tanks are unseaged. Maybe we pounce now. And by that, I mean we don't pounce now. We absolutely let them resiege and just back out. That's fine. That's fine. Playing it safe is cool. Spider Mine. Ugh. Oh, Spider Mine kills the Zealot. And then the Vulture. We've been trying to kill this robotics facility the whole game. Just kidding. For a while now. Did you send the whole army? Ah, Ample tried to sneak up this way on me. Call oh, that gray. Honestly, that gray is so hard to see. This is nuts. This is a really big macro. Rain says go. Rain says the tanks are on siege. Go, 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 go. Okay, the tanks are now siege, but we're going anyway. We have to commit. Rah, stasis up. Arbiters doing what they can to cloak the units and cause more scans. And the science vessels are problematic on that side of things, though. And Rain just has to tap out. He did kill a bunch of siege tanks, yes, but there are still... I mean, there's more than five. This base doesn't happen. Did they kill this? Don't come back. These are plus three Dragoons. The Vultures say, we don't care about your plus three Dragoons. Get out of here. We're going to kill them. Yeah. We're going to throw grenades at them. Rah. Do they shoot the grenades out of the Vultures, or do they throw them from the seat of the bike it kind of indicates like it's coming from the bike itself right it does oh double storm on those science vessels uh oh ample losing this base is disastrous he cannot afford to lose this base mm, it's not a lot of dragoons here sniping the comsat station is pretty much the best thing rain can do here and that's exactly what he does and pulling back is rain he's just he's playing pvt as you play pvt you go in, you attack, you lose a bunch of stuff, you kill a bunch of stuff, you regroup, you rebuild. You got a Zerg it. Here it is. Here's our thing. This isn't Hallucinated Arbiter, but this is Arbiter nevertheless. Is it going to die before it gets the recall off? Yes. <laughs> Look at how well placed these missile turrets are. Hilarious. Hey, Ample's got a fifth base on the left side. Alert, alert, alert. Rain, you can't allow that to happen, man. Is Ample making a comeback here? I think Rain is ahead for the first 22 minutes of this match, but it's not over yet. It is a far, far cry from being over. See if this works out. Is it going to work out? Another attack in here from Rain, jumping on a fairly less defended fourth base. Because a lot of the army's up there to the north. Rain getting some absolute work done here. It's a 2 3 on the tanks, 3 1 2 upgrades on the gateway units. Zealots out in front. There's a couple vultures here and no spider mines for them to deal with. Dragoons, Dragoons, and ah, uh, these guys are just trying to take down the command center. A lot of SCVs are getting murdered because they're repairing it. And actually, you know what? The Dragoons are like, we can take these tanks. Tank down, tank down, tank down. Goliath's putting extra damage here too, but uh, they got to pull back. They're pulling back and trying to make sure the command center is at least burning when they... No, it's dead. They have killed it. Yep. Oh, did he get... <laughs> Arbiter got stasis. Did he stasis himself? I don't know, but the fourth base is dead. 190 to 98 supply. I think Rain's got this thing won. I'm looking at it. This feels like a really nice Protoss win in a PVT. Artosa somewhere is very mad. And that's it. GG! Ample taps out. He lost his fourth. Yeah, he's got a fifth. But it's not enough. It's not enough to keep up with the incredible amounts of income that the Protoss player is still dealing with at this moment. Speaking of Artosis, he's moving to Canada, and he's hoping they'll still let him cast GSL remotely with Tasteless, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, that was great. That was a really excellent, excellent, very, 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 very good PVT, but not quite epic, but really well executed by Rain. Just a good technical showing of how to outexpand your Terran opponent, how to constantly attack him over and over again to keep that tank count low. And if you can do that stuff... Thumbs up. You are a victorious more often than not. The recall got shut down. We didn't get a fun recall off today, but that's okay. 
But yeah, this is the battle for most of it. Rain finally wipes it out, and I mean, wind condition acquired, I guess is the word for it there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rain at this point is making 15 Zealots and 6 Dragoons at a time, and all Ample can really pull off is a tank. He doesn't really have the money to make a ton of anything else, right? Not so much. Not so much. Great. Okay, so hit that like button if you haven't already, and let's check out this final score. 177,000 points from Apple, 206,000 for Rain. Outproduced the Protoss. 466 to 345, but the kill-death ratio is about 30 there. That I mean, yeah. I, Rain didn't kill everything Ample had. Ample tapped out with a, something of an army, but it wasn't enough. And this is where it is. 65,000 resources spent to 50 thousand resources spent that's a massive difference in 24 minutes rain getting it done doing what he needs to do and coming away with the win excellent all right cool so that's going to be it for me today this has been falcon paladin coming at you with yet another edition of starcraft brood war remastered go ahead hit that like button hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.